Speaking of sweet relief. What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis, Oop. Marty Sleva, hey. and Dan Stapleton. Oop. And we have a great show for you this week. We're going to talk about Middle Earth Shadow of War. I like that game. We're going to talk about the incoming uh, smartphone app for the Nintendo Switch. Mm. But first, it is that time of year again, my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your butts. It is time to check in with Game of the Year Watch 2017. You said hold on to your butts and you grabbed the table. That's right. Game of the Year is Mega Man 3. Did it, guys. Yeah, we've crossed over the halfway mark of the year. I don't think that's right. Quarter two is down. Yeah. Two quarters down. Yeah. Two quarters to go. It's just like football. Four quarters yep. entered. Yep. Two yep. You did it. You did it. <laughs> this is halftime. <laughs> this is time for the halftime yeah. show of 2017. Uh, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the last quarter, April to June, really only yielded one new mm. uh, major contender mm. for the Game of the Year space. That being Persona 5. Ooh, yeah. There's a bunch of other great games released, yeah. but I think, I think, for really getting down to it, that's the one that we'll be talking about alongside Zelda and Horizon. That's Neo. one Gold Farb will be talking about. Yeah. Nope, that's <laughs> one. I finished it. I finished it this weekend. 95 hours. Game also of the year. Also, you're a goatee? How, it's currently my goatee, yeah. How did you spend 95 hours with it, and there's two characters that you never even really got to know? There are so many characters. There's so many things. There's apparently a fishing mini game. I don't even know there's a pond in the game. That really stresses me out. Yeah. Well, it's that like life. It's like life. not want to There's play it. several humans in the world you haven't met yet. Yeah. Think about it. So let me, th- let me throw out this short list. Okay. Uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, mm-hmm. Persona 5, Neo, and Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm. Am I missing something there? I think I think you you got those three up here, and you got Neo. I said four, Neo. but oh, yeah. Neo's down there. I okay. think uh, Neo's the odd man out in that. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. I think some people might start making a case for Nier if more people play it. I started Nier after I finished oh, yeah, Nier, uh, Automata. Automata. I started it uh, right after I finished Persona, yeah, and I'm liking it that. a whole lot. Mm. I'm a little bored. <laughs> How much did you play? You said you played 40 minutes. No, no, no. That's not what I said. What, I played a couple hours. I played, uh, yeah, I played the opening couple scenarios or whatever you want to call them. What? You're not even near the point where uh, it's Oh. Sorry, that was bad. Uh, no, it's good. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is like, um, what's it called when you're like a, a fire station, you can drop babies off and no one will say anything? <laughs> <laughs> what we like, call that? Uh, we call that Justin's law. I don't even get the point you're making. It was like you could drop your bad puns off here. Yeah. No yeah. judgment. Yeah. No this judgment. Ellis Island of puns. Give us safe your place, poor. You're tired. Safe place for puns. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> speaking of uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, what do we think of that uh, Trials of the Sword? Uh, see, mm. Whoa! What? What? No, I. D- <laughs> You're giving me a look. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering I, what you're going to say. I don't want to say it now. Well, say it. Be brave. <laughs> like no, Samwise. I cringed because <laughs> I get accused of coming off as overly negative sometimes, mm, yeah. even mm. though I love and celebrate many video games, and Zelda's one of the greatest games I've played in years. I'm not that wild about the first DLC. Mm. Did, have you well, finished? Because. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I have nothing to add. <laughs> no, uh... <laughs> Again, Zelda is my game of the year, so uh, don't take this the wrong way. Uh, Master Mode, I thought, was uh, too hard. It's not for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I played it, and I was too stressed out, and um, you know your equipment bl- breaks. It be- turns it into a survival game. It really changes the tenor and uh, feeling of the game, which is really what you want from a hard mode. You don't want a hard mode that's just lazy and doubles the damage and doubles enemy health and calls it a day. Mm-hmm. Like, this really remixing many elements of the game sure. is the right way to do a hard mode, but I played it for an hour, and I'm like, it was too hard. It's too hard for me. Yeah. So, so that part of it was a bust. Yeah. What, what killed you? Uh, was uh, it the Black Lionel right on the Great Plateau? <laughs> I mean, uh, well, the first enemy killed me. Yeah. <laughs> and then I eventually got a little bit better and learned to play a little bit more stealthily. And I was just dying a lot and not having fun. Yeah. And so uh, Master Mode's not for me. Um, and even the dungeon, I made it 10 or 12 levels deep in that dungeon and then died. And uh, there are checkpoints, but I think I died just before one of the checkpoints. Yeah. And so it kicked me back out to the start. And I'm like, well, I don't like, I don't want to do this again either. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Talking to uh, Zach and Brian about the DLC, especially the trials, it sounds super interesting because it forces you to think about the game in a different way in terms yeah. of you have to use your powers to defeat enemies as opposed to because like your weapons and resources are such a limited commodity that you have to think outside the box and like use like. The, the magnet power to pick up a box, and you're like, this box is my weapon for this, this one. This yeah. is the only thing I have yeah, at my yeah. disposal. Like, it, it is, I will give the DLC credit, or that dungeon credit, for being so tuned 
Like it knows the game knows the pretty high degree of certainty that you're like, okay, on this floor, all your weapons are probably broken. Mm -hmm. But it gives you a metal box, yeah. and so uh, the, or or you can use your bombs on a few floors. But then the next floor, uh, there's air flowing, and so your bombs just float up in the air, yeah. and you can't use your bombs on that. Floor. Mm -hmm. yeah. so there's a lot of really really clever stuff in there. I'm not saying the DLC is bad. I'm saying the DLC for me, um, I not for you. Yeah, I played it that yeah. for one afternoon and then put it back down. I don't think I'm gonna pick it back up. No. I have not tried Master Mode yet, um, but I do like the Trial of the Sword. Yeah. Is it Trials or Trial? Singular? Trial. Trial. No one Trial. Trials of the Sword? Trials. I don't know which one it is. I will say... But I think it's a lot of fun. What do you say? The mapping, The I think it should have been a part of the base game. I'm bummed it's behind a DLC paywall. Oh, yeah. But it's crazy cool. Like, I ran the map, and I mean, I know it's the same experience everybody's having, but I had the experience of... I've explored every corner of this game world, <clears throat> and I see the game map, and I'm like, no, there's a whole yeah, big spot over there. here yeah. that I didn't even go to. And so I ran over there and found a shrine yeah. right away. Yep. And I'm like, yep. that's awesome. It's really cool. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really super cool. cool. Yeah, so uh, you know, I beat the game with relatively, I, I think I only did like 55 shrines and like 30 Korok seeds. So I knew there was all this content that I hadn't visited. But I'd already beaten Ganon, so I, wasn't, I didn't really feel motivated to yeah. like, continue. But now with the uh, Heroes Path mode... Uh, it totally has like reinvigorated my want, my uh, desire to explore because now the goal is to fill in the map. map. Yeah, exactly. And I have a new quest. Yeah, which is really cool. Like, I mean, DLC is not new for Nintendo. Like, uh, especially yeah. on on the Wii U, we had uh, really good at it. We had Mario Kart and we had Smash, but Nintendo does DLC really well. And I think this is really interesting because. I don't know. I've never finished a Zelda game and then immediately wanted to go back into this, but Nintendo releases this smartly just a couple months after the game release. A lot of people are done with it, and it makes you want to go back in and play it in different ways. And then by the time you're done with this, the story mode, the story DLC will be out. So. It does seem like like patching that uh, the Heroes Path mode in for free would have been would have been the way to go. Yeah, that would draw people back in. Then they would say, "Hey, I want to. I I'm enjoying playing this. I'll buy the DLC." Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and there is a a lot of games do that where they'll have like a version 2.0 or like an MMO will do that and be like, here are the features everybody gets for free, but if you want to explore the new continent or do this, this is what you have to pay yeah. for. And it would have been nice to make the Heroes Path a free update yeah. and then put the other stuff behind the paywall, I think. And I like the Trials of the Sword mode too. Uh, I think the checkpoints like at every 12 floors, if that's right. And then uh, so I, I think last night I got to like floor 11 or 12 and then died. So I know I'm going to... You gonna, know you can do I know it. I'm yeah. going to make it to that checkpoint yeah. uh, very soon. But I almost wish they were like procedurally generated because it's the same yeah. every time and I probably won't... Once I do reach that checkpoint, I probably won't ever do it again. Well, it especially sucks that you have to replay those exact same 11. Yeah. And you know, so I know what the I, hooks are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can fly through the first six floors like, you know, really yeah. easily. Yeah. It depends on what the, what the goal of the of that content is. Whether if it's if it's a leaderboard style thing, then you yeah. can't have it randomized because somebody could just get lucky. Yeah. But if it's if it's... You know, something you That's just want to cool. dive into over and over again, just to just for the hell of it, just to fight. Yeah. Then, then random is best. Yeah, I think yeah. you know the combat in that game. It's the weakest part of an incredible, amazing game. And then that that's it's a very combat heavy piece of DLC. So that's for me. I, you you know. think the combat's the worst thing in the game? Yeah, I do. Have you have you heard the VO? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> have you heard Zelda's voice? No. Second worst thing <laughs> in Zelda yeah. is the combat. Uh, okay, so comparing. Zelda with Horizon Zero Dawn. We have an email from one of our listeners, Isaac Peltz, who uh, says, you guys are doing a scooper, super job on the show. I don't like that. Keep it up. I like it. I liked it. He says, Horizon Zero Dawn and Zelda Breath of the Wild came out at identical times. Horizon is a masterpiece of a game, but sadly, Breath of the Wild lit the video game world on fire, and it's been the most prominent video game on people's minds since it came out. I'm wondering, did Horizon not do well because of Zelda? Or is it that despite good sales on Horizon's front, it just didn't make a blazing trail the way Zelda has? Will Horizon ever be talked about again until the sequel gets released? Sound off your thoughts in the comments below. <laughs> uh, no, first of all, I think Horizon did very well. Sold yeah, it sold incredibly copies. well. It reviewed very well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, also there, there is a, uh, a DLC expansion coming out. People will be talking about that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And they got they did a free it, update. So that's the fu that's where I thought yeah. this was going. Is it seems like Zelda and Horizon are now forever intertwined because they came out within a week of, uh, of each other, and then. A couple days after the Zelda update, we got this Horizon update that adds in a new game plus, and it adds in a super hard mode, yeah. and it adds in new face paints, which is sort of like exactly the stuff we're getting in Zelda. Yeah. And but all of that's free. And all that's free, yeah. yeah but then free. we're also getting the Frozen Wilds, which is uh, um, Horizon's like story based DLC this fall, which is probably yeah. when we're going to get the Zelda story based DLC. Yeah. Um, no, I don't think people are forgetting about this at all. I mean, I think it's unfortunate for Horizon that it it, it launched next to arguably one of the best games of. 
the past 10 years, but I, I think a lot of people would say yeah. the same thing about Horizon. I think Isaac's point, like I think Zelda sucked a lot of the air out of the room for other games releasing Q1 just by how good and amazing it turned out to be just in terms of space. You know, Game Scoop is 45 to 60 minutes long, you know, and every every time we talked about Zelda for a chunk of time, that's time that Horizon mm-hmm. didn't get that it might have gotten. Otherwise, if Zelda True. was, you know, a little bit more forgettable like Skyward Sword, for yeah. example. There's also the fact that Zelda is a 30-year-old franchise mm-hmm. uh, with people that have, you know, fans that have grown up almost their entire lives playing it. And Horizon is a new IP. Yeah, yeah. There, there are very few like new games that that blow up the way the way Zelda has or you know, that could. Yeah, and I mean Zelda also had a little bit of a bump by also launching alongside a really interesting piece of hardware mm-hmm. that a lot of us picked up and and were sort of surprised at how much we liked. And also, it's it's uh, at the same time it's constrained by that because especially yeah. early on there weren't that many switches out there, mm-hmm. whereas there were tens of millions of PS4s. Yeah, people. no one had any problem getting a PS4 or a copy of Horizon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's true. I mean, Horizon is a hugely innovative game in its combat system. You know, tethering enemies to the ground and uh, you know the mix of stealth and in your face action and melee and and long distance combat. There's such a wonderful feeling, bow and arrow. Like it's really really fresh and different than other third person action games. But how many times did we, you know, and other people on the internet say, I wish you could climb everything in that <laughs> yeah. game. Like, yeah. It, it, yeah. you know, it, it is more conventional than Zelda is, um, or breaks fewer conventions at yeah. least. And yeah. so um, in that sense, the comparison's a little bit unfair to Horizon. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're both great games. Yes. Uh, and I think they'll both be talked about at the end of the year, come mm-hmm. Game of the Year discussions. And I'm sure a lot of people will pick Horizon as their Game of the Year. I think I, I fell off of Horizon. Um, well, that's... Yeah, that's the other thing. It's but, and like, I, 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 like, I fell off of it because of Zelda. You yeah, know? yeah. Like, I, I did re- the same thing. Yeah, and so I, I've always in the back of my head wanted to pick it back up. Um, so maybe the DLC coming out would be the one. Well, especially, it was especially tough because I mean the games are very different, but at the same time they're both giant character-based open-world games that take place in a lush natural setting. So like, yeah. there are similarities between them. Post-apocalyptic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I, I so want to get back to, <laughs> I want to get back to Horizon Two, but it's been four months now yeah. since I played it, and now it's like. Do I have to start over? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. When I yeah. if I do pick it up, there's going to be this whole learning curve again of and like learn, figuring out the combat the, and like yeah, learn the combat again and you're fighting hard. What am I things. doing? Yeah, yeah what, are, what am I doing? I mean, Where am I going? The good, but the good thing is we're in a <clears throat> bit of a lull, so this is a good time for that's us true. to to sort of get caught up. It's the calm before the storm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, all right, some other uh, great games that were released over the next quarter. Although I I I don't think they will really be in the game of the year discussion, but MLB the Show uh, is really supposed to be really good. Good baseball game. <laughs> uh, I just don't, you know, we, yeah. when was, has a baseball game ever gotten Game of the Year from IGN? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, two good fighting games, Tekken 7 and Injustice 2. Yep. Both really good. Of course, Mario Kart, Kart 8 Deluxe uh, is great on the Switch, even though that's sort of a rehash mm-hmm. of a couple-year-old game. Two racing games, Dirt 4 and Forza Horizon 3 Hot Wheels. You guys even that, hear about that, this? Uh, yeah, it was awesome. It's an expansion. Yeah, yeah but it was but awesome. It's like, people are crazy. It was about. insane. Yeah, it, it reminds me of all the wacky stuff GTA Online does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just in terms of like, it just tears the world apart and throws you in fantasy settings, and yeah, super fun. And then there's also the uh, Stormblood expansion for Final Fantasy XIV. Mm-hmm. Also supposed to be very good. Another game I'd like to get back to. It's yeah. one of my top five MMOs. <laughs> uh, anything else I'm missing that is a legitimate Game of the Year contender? I think the first two acts of Resident Evil 7, well, I, I would say, nominate for Game of the Year. I was going to say, that's definitely one of my favorite games I've played this year. yeah. Um, yeah, the, the the last like act left a really sour taste in my mouth. But when I think like I still think about the like first. When you act, leave that, it's pretty that, much when you leave the mansion. When you leave the yeah the mansion yeah. grounds. Yeah. Um, yeah, like once you get on that boat. Um, but there's everything boat. before that is great. It's like a little, <laughs> like a little, like a little, like a schooner. Not a little boat. Like a tugboat. <laughs> um, but I think the first two thirds of that game are some of the most incredible survival horror I've ever played, and I think it's that if that's the direction Resident Evil is going to go in from now on, I'm yeah. totally on board. Yeah, I'm bored with that. Yeah. It's very spooky in VR. Dan, you oversee our reviews. Any, yeah. Anything we're missing here? I don't think so. I, I think um, actually a bunch of things that you mentioned there probably aren't even contenders. But <laughs> yeah, I like I, I think that the way it usually shakes out at the end of the year is is there are two or three things yeah. you know, that that are really duking it out. And I think I think Zelda, Horizon, are, are probably probably going to be. You didn't. A couple say, of those. You didn't say it. I didn't say for sure. <laughs> you didn't say it. <laughs> Two executive editors are going to vote for it. I, well, yeah, <laughs> I, I always always vote for something that doesn't win. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's uh, you know I, th- I think they're those two are going to be going to be up there. Maybe Mario. Uh, yeah, the yeah. I mean that's the other thing is that we're going to have 
come, I guess, September, we're going to have every week, we're going to have a, a major game, whether it be yeah. Destiny or AC. It gets a lot more interesting in the yeah, yeah. back uh, half. Battle, yeah, yeah. yeah. Battlefront. Battlefront could be up mm -hmm. there. The first Battlefront was so great. And it's like, it's like hey, you know, all, you know these eight things you didn't like about the first one? We yeah. fixed them all. And we, in theory, hopefully. And we added a story. Yeah. So One super interesting thing this year compared to the same discussion we were having one year ago was all the stuff we were naming from the first half of the year last year were indies. Like we were talking about yeah. The Witness and Firewatch and Oxenfree and like this year, none of the games we mentioned were indies. Well, there'll be, it's hard to predict, you know, I, I, I actually did have Stardew Valley on my radar, not to be a hipster about yeah. it. Like I'm like, you know, <laughs> it looks like an incredible farming RPG, but for most people that game sort of came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Obviously the same with Undertale. Um, so yeah, I would say by the end of 2017, there'll probably be one sort of darkest have, dungeon style. We know game. we have stuff like Tacoma and Cuphead coming mm -hmm. and Tacoma's predecessor was nominated for Game of the Year, Gone Home. Uh, mm. Cuphead needs to be just because it, they did it. They made the game. <laughs> <laughs> you get a nomination yeah. for making the game. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a shout-out for uh, for Shadow of War here because Sh yeah. Shadow of Mordor was my Game of the Year for, for 2015. Hold on, Dan. You're getting ahead of us. We're going to talk about that in a few <laughs> minutes. All right. I'm just, just want to be a part That's of that conversation. That's called foreshadowing. Part of the, the conversation. The foreshadowing of war. <laughs> That's That's that. That. <laughs> See the joke That's was the joke. <laughs> That's the joke. Uh, so Justin, you think uh, the best game you've played this year is Zelda? Yeah, yeah I I would agree, Marty. Yeah, probably of maybe this generation. Marty, you're picking uh, as of today, uh, as of July seventh, yes. twenty seventeen. I would, Persona I would 5. pick Persona with with Zelda as a very close second. But what about Dan? I'd probably go Zelda so far. There you go. There you go. I I said favorite of this generation. It's my second favorite of this generation after the Wii. <sighs> Uh, Zelda is also the most popular game on IGN so far this year, just in terms of what's getting the most clicks. Yep. What However, about, what about GTA V? The most read, <laughs> the most read page in all of IGN this year is the GTA V Cheats and Secrets Wiki. It's actually going to be the most read page until all of us die. What probably. year did that game come out? Dave? 2013. 2013. GTA yep. 5 Cheats and Secrets consistently yep. does more page views than any feature, Marty or I. They could fire all of us, and we'd still like. Yeah, it'd still just crank along. Yeah. Just GTA. It's yeah. gonna be. It's gonna be the goddamn apocalypse. <laughs> Humanity's decimated. There's nobody. This office is just empty. We're all turned to ash, and that yeah. page is still so gonna the get. GTA 5 Cheats page is like a Twinkie slash cockroach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's exactly. gonna somehow yeah. won't get 1.2 million page views a month. <laughs> like all, all the. People down in their bunkers are just going to be playing GTA. Online. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and and then, playing in their GTA bunker. <laughs> zombies are going to be playing it. Yeah, there you go. And then I tweeted about this earlier today. Do you know what the most read news headline of the year is on IGN? The Xbox One X related? I even saw, related? Your, I saw, I saw your <laughs> tweet and I have already forgotten. Yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, yes, Netflix to produce the Witcher TV series. Oh, wow. Yeah. The most read news headline of 2017 so far. Why do you get a Resident Evil voice on us? It's just excited. I get excited. <laughs> Goaty, Goaty got me like, wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, as long as we're wrapping up best stuff of the year so far, what's the best movie you've seen of the year so far? Marty. Big Sick. I saw it twice sick. this weekend. Twice? Yeah. Wow. I want to see it, but is it sad? Yeah. Uh do you know the story of Kumail Nanjiani and his wife? I mean, I've seen the trailer. Okay. And it looks like kind of a funny, sad movie. So it's, ba yeah, it is a funny, sad okay. movie. Okay. But it's based on a true story. So if you know the yeah, true story. I know, I know. He's not dead. Okay. Well, he's not the I one in like, trouble in the movie. Oh. <laughs> is, it, is it less, is it more or less sad than Manchester by the Sea? Less oh. sad. Okay. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> less sad than Manchester by the Sea. Okay, good. <laughs> then I might be able to, then I might see it. Dan, what's the best movie you've seen? Uh, I haven't seen a whole bunch of movies this year. I think the only one I've seen in the theater is probably Wonder Woman, which is very good. So by default, yeah, go <laughs> that's Wonder Woman. That's, Wonder Woman was probably my favorite uh, blockbuster of the year. So. I was uh, Wonder Woman was very good. Justin, you're a, a father. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm. I'm also I, a father. <laughs> <laughs> Justin is famously Justin's a father, a father. Of, of two. Double dad. Uh, <laughs> I am not sure that I've seen a movie this year. In, th in theaters? <laughs> I know I haven't seen one in theaters. Have you seen any movie that was released in 2017 at home? Like, did you watch Logan or Get Out? No. I haven't seen Logan, Get Out, Wonder Woman, or Guardians 2 yet. Wow. You should probably see those. Yeah. Movies. Uh, Baby right. Driver was good. I can't <laughs> so even I was make say, it. It takes me and my wife like three nights to get through an episode of British Baking Show. So <laughs> my life's not very yeah, easy. That's kind of long. Yeah. Uh, I think Logan is my favorite movie Ooh, so good. far, but I'm seeing Baby Driver tonight. Yes. So check really in with good. me tomorrow. I think you're gonna like it a lot. Oh I'm man, sure I love it. Like also, Spider Man. Spider Man's this weekend. People seem to like it. I know. So yeah. much. I need to get yeah. Yeah. Baby Driver. Yeah. He, did, he didn't make Spider Man. I'm stoked. Hot Fuzz is it's, it's like a it's Hot Fuzz is great. It might be one of my top five movies. Wow. Move over, 
Schindler's List. <laughs> there are new cops in this British burg. <laughs> Is that what that movie's about? I haven't seen it in a while. The Great are Good. No. Uh, speaking of movies. Yeah, well, speaking of movies, <laughs> let's go back to 1992. No, since we've entered July. Hey, it's The Vulture. July 2017. <laughs> I pulled the uh, ni- July 1992 issue of Electronic Gaming Monthly from our, years ago. From wow. our magazine rack. And uh, apparently, you know, so 1992, uh, Zelda A Link to the Past had just come out. So we're still talking about Zelda stuff. And I had forgotten about this. Do you guys remember that the Zelda game on Super NES uh, came with like a guidebook, a hint book? And people were upset about it. At the time in nineteen ninety two, they read think it. it spoiled the whole game for them. Just don't read it. Yeah, what so are like, you doing? Well, there, at yeah, least but. at least two people wrote into Electronic Gaming Monthly. This is Brett Saunders from Columbus. Uh, what in he's what Nebraska? Yeah. I've hey, beaten. Brett. He says I've beaten Zelda three in nine days. Zelda three. Yeah, <laughs> they call it, <laughs> they it Zelda three. I've beaten Zelda three in nine days. It was so easy, especially when they included the map and the hints. Don't the hint look book at it. gave all the major secrets away. Must why must they ruin the game by giving all the major secrets away? You really jumped on Sega for its Fantasy Star hint book. Shouldn't you do the same for Nintendo? I waited years for this version, and I probably will have to wait even more until the next one. Well, yeah. What is this sociopath <laughs> talking about? I feel so depressed i love that game do you have any news on zelda 4 what should i do in the meantime wow it only takes it only takes him nine days to crank one out right uh and i then, really like what should i do in the meantime it's like go live your life and it's this Clinton's is precedent it's great this is yeah uh the internet is, just destroyed this guy's life this is carlos sanchez from austin texas he says what's with zelda 3 <laughs> nintendo <laughs> promises to bring it out last fall and then they made me wait six months longer why easy to give them time to print up a tip book that completely destroys the game. <laughs> Don't they realize that some players actually want to find their own way through the game? You know, it's good to know that gamers were complaining about things. Even yeah, when back, back in the, the day. I, mean, I don't know what was in the tip book. I don't think, I mean, Marty says don't look at it, but it is odd, like, <clears throat> to, spoil, to spoil your game with a piece of collateral that's in, the, like, I don't know what's in it. Yeah. Like, I don't know how general it is or if it's, yeah. like, giving you, like, dungeon locations and stuff. I would love like, the idea if, like, in our wikis, there's someone who comments on every page, like, thanks a lot for spoiling the game for me. So <laughs> just get off. Just go somewhere else. Well, I, I would I would bet that that was as a result of them doing a bunch of focus testing and finding that some people needed help. Sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I don't know and, where to go yeah, or yeah, what to do. And, yeah. like, Back then, like you, you had no other recourse. Right, you could you yeah. couldn't go online you and, and Google. Or, yeah, yeah. There's, Ryan Scott would answer the phone. Well, <laughs> EGM responded to Brett and Carlos with, "We were as surprised and as disappointed. Oh, man. You yeah. were yeah. when we opened up the production Zelda box, only to see the map and book. It appears that Nintendo doesn't want to be bothered with all the phone calls that would come in from <laughs> players who got stuck in the game. Their solution: pack a give the game away hint book with the cart. Of course, their comeback is, don't look." at it but players are only human and it's so easy to sneak a look when a player gets stuck don't expect the fourth in the series to come out for quite some time unless they're working on a new cd-rom version Ooh. no that divorce happened pretty quickly with <laughs> <Yeah>. sony <laughs> but it, yeah it's like you when you get stuck that's when you need that what's wrong why, why is that also that? egm what do you do like <laughs> i thought they'd be on our side they yeah. weren't yeah they're on the side of the gamers marty yeah <laughs> like us axe <laughs> Anyway, I think we should we should make better use of this uh, great um, game magazine library that we have. I really like this. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is a good recording. We have one of my favorite things about this office is that I think we have a complete run of EGM just on a shelf. I think so, yeah. Uh, because if, if just not, through a weird near of corporate fate, we yeah. <laughs> bought oh, yeah. one up, which owned e- old EGM. Yeah. And, and then we were bought by Ziff. And, yeah. yeah. Full circle. Yeah. We also have that cold brew machine, which gives you real good iced coffee. Okay. That's mm-hmm. Good point. Yeah. Second favorite thing yeah. about this office. <laughs> the cold brew coffee. Yeah. Yeah. And then the EGM EGMs. run. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, Dan. You may now talk about Middle Earth Shadow of War. What about it? You want you oh now you got nothing to say. Hey, I've been on vacation for two weeks. If any if any new information's come out, you tell me. Okay, here's here's an update. Uh Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. The first game has been updated with a Nemesis Forge feature Ooh, what? that will let you yeah. import your arch enemies and loyal followers into Shadow of War. That's super cool. I yeah. didn't yeah. see that. That was Did this that morning. While I was on vacation? No, it was this morning. No, that, oh. Well, no. <laughs> yesterday. Right? Oh, yes. We reported yeah. on it yesterday. I ran the morning meeting. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, uh, I guess I guess I'm, I might need to actually refresh on how this works. Of course, there's, there's the Nemesis system. Yep. But you only have one Nemesis at a time, right? Not, not no, not really. No? Yeah, there's... So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, there there are a bunch of different characters who are okay. can be your nemeses. 
Um, and I, I forget how that worked at the end. I guess there was one guy leading the army at the end, or the, the group. Well, and some would come back. Like, I don't know yeah. if it happened at random, but sometimes you would defeat a guy, and then they'd come back with, like, a big scar. Or, like, he'd be all burnt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, burnt, if you depending yeah. on how you killed them. And then, uh, it, in theory, made the game, like, you couldn't rely on your same tactics <laughs> over and over again because they'd be immune to the way that they died last well, it's, time. It's not necessarily the way they died, but they, they would gain a new random immunity. Or random, random strength. Was it random? Yeah. Yes. That's lame. But either way, I mean, they would... Uh, so those characters that you presumably have some history with. But then who's the arch enemy? I mean, or, just, uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, the, the final the final battle was with Sauron. But see, I don't think you can bring Sauron. They're, they're talking about one of your these right. nemesis. So I haven't I haven't seen how it works. I imagine it's probably like the the top group of dudes you fought okay. the most. Yeah, probably probably just the guy you fought the most. Yeah. The the free update will read your save file and identify your arch nemesis along with your mo most loyal orc follower and bring them cool. both like into Shadow of War. Later this year. Loyal. I wonder how they determine that. That's prob yeah. probably just the guys you interacted with the most. Who you romance yeah. the most. <laughs> <laughs> you have a you have a funny Cockney orc follower that's on your side in the sequel. Yeah. Well, there's, there are a bunch of a bunch of one guys you can seduce. Yeah. Whoa. But you have one. There's one like named sidekick guy, right? Is that the one voiced by Camille Nanjiani? <laughs> yes. That's not a joke. Uh, they, they announced he's, he's the voice cast today. Oh, wow. Uh, I didn't miss that. Uh, especially because they're doing a panel at Comic-Con. Uh, and it was like Troy Baker, Laura Bailey, and Kumail Nanjiani was one of them. Uh, yeah. Well, they're actually pushing the original game, Shadow of Mordor, pretty hard right now. It's uh, You can play it for free through, well, I guess, through this, this weekend on Steam and Xbox One. Mm -hmm. And it's discounted up to 80% off on all platforms. Xbox like four One, bucks. PS4. Yeah, it was crazy Steam, cheap yeah. during the Steam sale, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, you can get it for $4. But yeah, yeah. Not, not, the, not the full edition. You still have to go back and buy the... DLC for another couple months. That DLC any good? I never it was, played it. It was fine. It wasn't great. Yeah. I'm excited. There, this there, is... was, there was one where you get you know, more varieties of monsters to, yeah. to, to ride and control, which was fun. So you I are absolutely going to turn out to be a bad guy at the end of these games, right? I mean, you're sort of. Not like, in the first one. I mean, you're like a spooky ghost. You're the same the character. Person, and they're, they're building you up to, I mean, you're controlling orcs. In the second one, you're making a ring of power and building up your own orc army. And you, you are not a conventional <laughs> good guy, no. I just think but, it's the most like open twist i mean maybe they're going to subvert it in some way but it absolutely absolutely seems like by the third game you're just going to become evil that'd be kind of cool who do we play at what's the name of the guy we play as uh cell brimbor or keller brimbor Brim yeah and, uh, i forgot what the name of the name brimbor is the ghost right yeah yeah and then tar tariel or something tar i was gonna say tariel something but i don't like know that's that. quite right that's probably some something very man. generic like Taris. Yeah. ford ford Taris. <laughs> ford Taris. <laughs> yeah well shadow of war is out october 10th and we are yeah, i forgot i got pushed two months yeah i got pushed yeah I thought the, uh, I mean, including some of the stuff that we had in IGN first, I just thought the game looked a little bit shaky. I'm just like, mm, like I don't know about some it of this footage. It looks really cool in three. Some of these animations, but then I, again, like you never know with this stuff. Like sometimes the only thing that they have available to show off is an old build, or it almost always is. Yeah. like it's almost yeah. always like something they've they've been showing for a while and they know how it behaves. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mean, game production's just odd, right? Like sometimes sometimes the game's going to be great, but the animation just hasn't been, you know, who knows? Yeah. Any number of weird things can happen. Um, but what they showed off at E3 was very improved. Mm -hmm. So um, it sort of put my concerns to bed. Yeah, I mean, it, the, it broke during my demo that I saw. Like, it's, <laughs> sucks. it was it was not a not a massive thing. It was yeah. just like one of the, like, they, were, they were like climbing up a siege guy to try and launch themselves over the wall and they just like climbed into the air and then the siege guy fell down dead. So they just ran up the wall. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, they, they delayed it two months though. So, I mean, they they're, they're aware of that. Yeah, and if, if it if it were if it were done, it would be out. Yeah. So like they're obviously still, you know, ironing ironing this stuff out. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's not it's not completely smooth yet. Yeah. I think anybody listening to this or watching this, if you uh put if you're like me entering E three, you paid a ton of attention to like Spider Man and stuff like that, uh, and slept on Shadow of War just because you you know saw IGN first mm -hmm. or saw the other stuff. Go back and watch the E three stuff. It, it's a really, really different mm -hmm. uh, experience. It looks really cool. Yeah. Yep. Like the scale of those of those yep. sieges is amazing. Yeah. I'm a little bit I mean, I'm always happy a game gets delayed because I'd rather have it be a little bit better. But like that would have been a cool game to play in August because, like I mentioned, it's well, sort of. Dead. I was gonna say, uh, Shadow of War is out October 10th, and then we have 18 days to beat it before Mario and Assassin's Creed and Wolfenstein come out. Yep. Something has to give. There's no way the three of those come out that day. That's the 27th, right? Yeah. 27th, the 28th. Yeah. Yeah. What do we think out of which out of those games, which is most likely to be delayed? Mario, Wolfenstein. Oh. Uh, Unfortunately, Marty, I yeah. agree with Marty. I think Assassin's Creed has a history of, of slipping it a little, a little, little bit. That's never has a history never of coming out, fall, out every year. Never yeah, out in the but fall. But it, it, no, it slip, it slips like a few weeks. Sure, I don't know. But I mean, My Nintendo doesn't give a crap if they launch alongside Assassin's Creed. But no. you know, <laughs> Ubisoft and Bethesda are paying attention. Yeah, yep. yeah. 
All right, let's check in with the listeners. Hey, listeners. Listeners, remember you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com, just like Matt in Dallas, Texas did. And he says, just wanted to get your thoughts on the current Switch voice chat situation. Curious if you thought that Nintendo's decision to limit voice chat to a smartphone app was because of the mobility of the console. For instance, if you're playing away from the dock, a phone is better suited for voice chat. Are there any benefits to having voice chat restricted to a smartphone app? No. I mean, I, I think the one benefit is is child control, basically, <laughs> like parental controls. Mm. Like, your ki- if your kid doesn't have their own smartphone, nobody's going to be able to talk to them, which is good. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty torn. Uh, I, everyone's complaints are completely valid. It's janky and weird, and it's like it's that classic Nintendo thing of two steps forward and one step back. Uh, it, you know, where why do they have to do things different than what the standard is? Why do you have to have this thing on your phone and a second screen? And it just feels yeah. awkward. But um, the counterpoint is like, I already communicate with my friends if we want to hop on and play a game together. Like, I'm already texting. Um, so that's kind of how it already works. Yeah. Um, I think it's just a reflection of what's already reality. Yeah. And ultimately, like, the Switches, I, I play my Switch primarily uh, handheld. Like, I literally don't know where my dock is. I think Jose took it. To Nintendo, which I <laughs> think is very rude. It sounds uh, bad. Yeah, it sounds like Jose. Um, but the battery life isn't great. And so I imagine if it was also doing voice chat, the battery life would be even worse. And yeah. so having that tethered yeah. to my phone, which has great battery life and I always have in my pocket, isn't the worst thing to me. Yeah, I mean, like they, they didn't include Bluetooth in this thing probably because I wanted to save costs and to, to, to save battery life. Mm-hmm. So that that could have a lot to do with it. Has there ever been a handheld with built-in voice chat? I remember like the DS had a microphone, but I don't remember if any games allowed you to chat online. Did, did the Vita? Could, the Vita had to have. Vita yeah, did? yeah, Freedom Wars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I say with minimal confidence. <laughs> I remember playing that with Greg. I think we were talking to each other. We might have so, been literally right next to each other though. Yeah, that's true. I, I think it's just, it's just a problem. <clears throat> it's a problem when you when you position it next to you know as a, as a home console next to the others mm. because those you know you can just plug a, a a headset into your controller and go. Yeah. So even if they had even if they had just done that where it's like okay that's a function where if you if you plug it into the the Joy-Con grip and maybe the uh, you can plug a headset into that. Yeah, then I think that would that would have made a lot of problems go away for them. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm trying to think, like if I wanted to play Mario Kart with you today, and you were at your house and I was at my house, how would we get that together? We would text each other. Yeah, so that's why t- to me it's not a big deal. Although, right, but but you're not doing that as you're playing. Like you like you've got to take your hands off of off of it's stuff. True. The phone is also like a lobby system. It powers the whole thing. I mean, you know, that whole matchmaking, all of that happens on this other device, which is the same way I think most real world friends already get together and coordinate their multiplayer sessions. Especially in like Xbox Live is a very very robust and you know not you, you pin things and yada yada. Like they have a whole party system that's much more robust. Nintendo doesn't. So maybe it does sort of make sense to pull that out of the Switch and onto this sort of other device where people are already communicating. Yeah, it's, it's just a just kind of a juggling act, right? With with everything else, you've got one controller or one key mouse and keyboard, and you're just doing everything with that. With this, having to put one thing down and pick another thing up to communicate, I think it's the awkwardness. I use my Switch handheld just like you, mm-hmm. and so I can already sort of envision just yeah, I got my phone, and the Switch yeah. in one hand, and a bunch of babies everywhere. Oh, ah, yeah. I got a so, baby, baby in one hand. Yeah. Uh, like if you've, if you've got the second a, one, hella babies. That's the name of my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got like a Bluetooth headset and you're just talking to people over the over the phone like that, then fine. But you know, why why do I even need an app for that? Let's just call them. Yeah, I mean, it's not surprising to me though, because this is Nintendo. Like they're they're as for as forward thinking as they are with a lot of things. Like when yeah. you can look at the Switch, like they are still backwards when it comes online or a couple generations yeah. behind. I do think the actual app itself. We got our first look at it uh, with Splatoon, Splatoon direct. direct, and it looks super cool. Yeah, like it looks like looks like it works. Yeah, um, I like. Yeah, it looks like something that'll be, you know, pleasing to yeah. play around. With. I'm excited for Splatoon. When the app, yeah. the app comes alongside Splatoon two, yeah. right? This yeah. month. Mm, yeah. I mean, this yes. month. Yeah. Yep. A couple weeks. I miss Splatoon one. Splatoon two is being criticized for only kind of being a half sequel. Like it's very yeah. very similar to the previous. Um, but again, as someone that only played the first one a little bit around the office, you know, doesn't bother me. I'm, I plan on picking it up. Yeah, I mean, uh, any any Wii exclusive is going to be, or Wii U exclusive rather, is going to have a whole new audience to access. Yeah, which so is like why why reinvent the wheel when a lot of people never played it. Yeah, I mean, we keep getting those teases the from Platinum with uh, Bayonetta's and Wonderful 101 possibly coming to Switch. Mm-hmm. I wonder cool. if Splatoon yeah. 2 started life as like Splatoon Deluxe, and then Nintendo got cold feet about doing like Mario Kart Deluxe and Splatoon Deluxe. So they said, look, know. just plus it up a little bit. You know, uh, let's yeah. let's go ahead and make it a sequel. Yeah. 
I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see until when it comes out yeah. how sort of next step it is. I don't like those Splatoon Amiibo. Oh, okay. dude, I think they're designed. I love how they look. I don't know. They're very Japanese. I like the design. You have design. enough Amiibo so. anyway. Are you Thank done? You for using the, the proper plural. Yeah. Just like Pikachu. There's m- multiple Pikachu. is still Pikachu. Not Pikachu? No. <laughs> uh, last night. <laughs> <laughs> Justin got a good chuckle out of that one. <laughs> He's so tired. <laughs> last night, yeah. <laughs> last night, uh, the wife and I had dinner with some of her college friends, mm-hmm. and they're not big gamers. You know, they play Mario Kart, mm, Wii Sports, stuff like that. Yeah. One of them asked me, "What's the deal? What's the deal with that Wii Switch?" Oh no! <laughs> uh, oh no! Yeah. it's like a Nintendo nightmare. Somewhere, Reggie just yeah. got shivers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought that was pretty good. I don't know. Maybe that's just something about how strong the Wii branding was for that five years or so. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, moving on. This is Baron F, who's definitely a video game boss. Yes. <laughs> he says, so long story short, I have been a console gamer for about eight years, but I sold my PS4 a while back, mainly due to me being in college, not having the time to play. I've recently got the bug back to game, but a few of my friends went to PC. I was curious what your take is on this, and if you have any advice. I tend to play games such as Battlefield, Call of Duty, and Destiny. Also, I've been watching PUBG and have fallen in love with this game, but I haven't played it yet. Love the podcast. So I guess he's really asking us, what do you think about PC gaming? Me likey. <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> Dan? <laughs> oh, Justin's got a, got a game PC, too. <clears throat> yeah. He does, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, <laughs> no, it, it, if, I mean, it, yeah. So, like, the, the benefits... Uh, to PC gaming are are numerous. <laughs> I mean, there are especially as a college student, you yeah. Know, PCs they don't have to be; they tend to be probably be a little bit bigger, tend to be a little bit pricier. You can get a PS4, especially used but on the cheap. Except that I think I mean everyone already has a PC. Everybody has a computer. Yeah, but not not necessarily a gaming computer. I mean, laptops are right. very hot these days. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> no, if you uh, if you want a gaming PC, it'll cost you something on top of it. I mean, I I always you know you get the the uh, the debate about consoles versus PC and people say, oh, well, uh, consoles are cheaper. Yes, true. But most people already have a, a PC as well. They have a, a laptop. The question is, you know, if you combine, if you put the extra couple hundred bucks that you would have spent on a console into getting a, a computer uh, th- that's just more capable, then, yeah. then it kind of evens out yeah. I, a, a little more. I really love my gaming PC. Really happy I did it. Thank you again for the help building it, Dan. I've talked about it on Scoop many, many times. Um, I'd sort of been toying with building a gaming PC. Finally did it. Um, did you name it? <laughs> I did not. Tanya. Tanya the PC. Yeah. At some point, You're though, a third child. At some point, I'm going to hit that on button, and there's going to be some weird BIOS error, and I'm not going to know how to fix it. And then it's like, and it's just yeah. like, there's no, like, I, I'm going to text you. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, and if you're I, like, hey, can we can we uh, yeah. open up our Splatoon apps? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, like you you can start have a PS4 and get the same error these days, and well, you, you got to ship it to Sony. To, yes, but I'm just saying, like with a PC, you know, at some point, like the GPU, something's gonna come loose, and I'm just not very experienced with it. Like for someone like Dan, that's a real PC enthusiast, you know, that's great. But for me, that kind of wants to treat it like a console, and I and I do. Um, it's it's a little bit scarier to mm-hmm. me. That I have some ten thousand dollar, eleven hundred dollar thing that like at some point something's gonna come loose or break. Yeah. And but stop, stop did shaking. You say ten thousand dollars? <laughs> no. What the hell's wrong with you? I almost you said, built Nora. I was gonna say ten or eleven hundred, but then I said no one says ten hundred. So I said one thousand or eleven. A lot went through your head <laughs> in that split second. Yeah. It is good that we clarify yeah. that. But uh, also, <laughs> I mean, in the long run though, like, you know. You, if you build the right PC, it will last you a long time. And also, looking at stuff like Steam sales, like, You'll man, you can money. start saving money, you know, in the long run. Yeah, you get a, a GTX 1070 right now, and it'll it'll serve you very well for the yeah. next several years. So I have I have a I only have a 1080p TV, and that's what my computer's plugged yep. into. So um, until I make the jump to 4K, I mean, I'm I'm good for a long, long time yep. for playing things on Ultra. Uh, all these games that uh, Baron F tends to play, Battlefield, Call of Duty, Destiny, uh, are all on PC. Yeah, and, and like a, a shooter, too. like one thing you've got to make sure is that you're comfortable with, with mouse and keyboard because plugging in a, a gamepad and trying to play those games online with, with people on mouse and keyboard, you're going to get destroyed. You yeah. can't so play campaigns that way, though. You can, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I played through Titanfall 2 with a controller. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's the exact same game, 
uh, yep. generally on on PC and console. Yeah. Uh, just you know, in, mo- in a multiplayer environment, you're just yeah. you know, don't, don't don't try and play player unknown battleground with a with a with a gamepad. That will go poorly. But mm-hmm. like if your if your focus is wanting to play games with your pals, and you sort of have to go to where all your pals are. Yep. That's true. Yeah. Like, I think that's why that's sort of worked in PlayStation 4's favor this year, uh, this generation. Yeah. Over it, Xbox. It, it does. Like if if you're concentrating in shooters, you're not going to miss out on a whole lot on PC. Um, I mean, Destiny was kind of the big exception to that rule, yep. uh, but Destiny 2 is coming to PC, yeah. albeit a little bit later. Uh, I think it's like a month or two later. It's, uh, it's yeah, it's, I think it's October, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, the, the beta will be around, and anyway. Uh, so if, if you're concentrating on shooters, then you're fine to, to be on PC. You're, you're going to miss out on you know the Sony and Microsoft. Well, not the Microsoft stuff. Microsoft stuff is now all on PC, mm-hmm. which is nice. But you're, you're going to miss out on the, the Sony first-party exclusive. Can't play Persona, so don't. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> or Zelda. You always, I've always, Baron uh, mentions that he had a PS4 and sold it. And like, I totally appreciate that everyone's life situation is different. Uh, you know, something happens, you need some money, you have this thing, you can turn sure. it into a few hundred dollars. But I feel like we hear a lot from people that like, you know, buy a console, then, oh, I need some money, sell the console, then buy the console and sell the console. And it's like, it makes me cringe a little bit every time. Like, you're costing yourself every yeah. time you do that. Like I've never sold a console. Exactly. Like, like I still have my PS1, 2, 3. I've never sold a console. Marty will be buried with them. Yeah, like a, like a pharaoh. <laughs> Bury me with my <laughs> console. <laughs> Where is my Sega Nomad? <laughs> Uh, All right, our final email this week comes from Brendan Scott in British Columbia, Canada. And I think this will be our easiest one to answer. He says, I like my games, but when my fiends come over, they look at me weird when I've only played certain games for half an hour, when I've played others for 50 hours. Is it just me, or should I play games in an order, or should I just play what I want when I want? want Yeah, why would you you not play what you want? That's (laughs) the whole point. You play what you want. Yes. It sounds like like your mates are chumps. His fiends. His fiends? His, fiends. his, en- his enemies? Don't invite your enemies <laughs> yeah. over to your home. Are, wait, are, are these his droogies? <laughs> what is happening? I don't know. Is this a tri- oh. is this a no one watched Clockwork Orange? Well, no, it's a long time I've not seen it. I was I'm with you there. Yeah. Uh Brendan, as with most things in entertainment, you should play what you want when you want. Watch what you want when you want. Uh, well, except pornography in public. <laughs> Hey, it's the, her I mean, in Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, that one woman in Starbucks at E3. She was watching porn on her phone so loudly, and it was oh, like two in the a, afternoon. This is the real I thing. Bet. This was last. This was last year at E3. Two thousand six. Altana was in line. Starbucks by her war in twenty sixteen. A woman who didn't seem insane was watching <laughs> pornography very loudly on an iPad in front of him in line. Hmm. <laughs> what a world. And then yeah. didn't someone say something? And then she's just like, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. porn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was proud of her. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think the only reason you would you would wa- you like feel obligated to play something you didn't just want to play is if you want to be part of that conversation. Mm-hmm. So if your friends are all playing yeah. that thing, then okay, I'll play that for more than That's more true. than I initially wanted to, just so I can keep talking to them about it. Like we say on another show, sometimes Brendan, whatever gets you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that anime club thing? <laughs> yeah, 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 man. yeah. <laughs> And that brings us to Video Game 20 Questions. Ooh. Our suggestion this week comes from Jerry in Florida. Not RJ. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry in Florida. Let the questioning begin. Can you, uh, can you, can you see your character's hands in this game? Yes. Oh boy, I hate your question. You can questions. see the, yeah. Yes. Okay. Questions. It's not Half Life. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can see you can absolutely see Gordon. No. Yes, you when can. you swing the crowbar, you can absolutely. Okay. You can, I don't when you're holding you the can't gun. see his feet. Yeah, I don't think you have feet. That is in true. Half-Life. Yeah. yeah, you can't. You can't see his Was this released after January first, two thousand? No. Ooh, yeah, it's an no. early hands game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it could be any third person game or first person. God, I hate just about hate you. Yeah, the hands questions maybe it's not great. And it can still be Dark Forces. You never see Kyle Katarn's hands. Not Dark Forces. <laughs> Probably. I still think it's Batman Returns, yeah. which is on the cover of this electronic game monthly. But I'm not. I'm not confident enough to ask that. Uh, w- was this uh, after uh, January first, 1990? Yes. All right. We got a 90s game. All right. That narrowed it down. <laughs> Dan, you're up. Dan, uh, There's only like eight or nine games released in the 90s. Yeah. Right? All right. Is is it third person? Yes. All right. Ooh. Is it is it uh, 2D? Yes. All right. All right. Do we want to try to lock down a console? Yeah. Uh, was this uh, was this on the? Uh... No, no, no. They ask. Uh, sorry, I just I don't. You know, if you ask no. a specific console, that's a trap. But it's not a trap because if it's two D, I, I honestly think it's the NES or the, the Super Nintendo. Was this on the Nintendo family of consoles? Yes. I don't like that. I don't like that answer at all. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, it could be odd, but it could be a gamble. Dungus. <laughs> Until it is. It's true. Wait, is this uh, exclusive to a Nintendo platform? No. Okay. So what are we talking, like Aladdin? No, it has well, to be a Aladdin. It can't be anything else but Aladdin. Uh, it still could. I just want everyone to know that it still could be Batman Returns for the, for the Super <laughs> Nintendo as well as the Sega Genesis. Uh, multi-platform. Do you do you play as a human? Yes. What do I win if it's Aladdin? <laughs> Aladdin wasn't a human. He was a figment of the genie's imagination. Whoa! Is yeah, this right. your is this your Aladdin yeah. head cannon? Yeah, uh, is this a yeah? But, um, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This game part of a series? Mm, I don't think so. No, Batman I don't Returns. So. There's only one Batman Returns. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Batman Returns too. <laughs> Batman Returns. Okay, again. so it sounds like we got a one, a one off. All right, still could be Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one has eliminated eliminate Aladdin. Uh, all right, uh, is it is it fantasy themed? Um, no, oh, you're talking about. Let's clarify. Fantasy means like swords and sorcery, and, and you know magic and and such. Okay, no, right. Ooh, so not it's not Aladdin. And Far used magic. That's mm. ten. F. We don't even know what exactly what console this was on. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's a two D. So, uh, I presume sixteen bit. We don't know. It could be eight bit. Yeah, I mean sixteen multi- bit was predominantly, the but 90s. it's multi platform. And it was the nineties. It was the nineties, so it would have to be let's late. Assume, yes. Let's assume it was on the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Right, I I I am. You can see your hands. It's two D. Stop person. saying you can see your hands. That's just <laughs> you play as a excess human. Excess information. <laughs> you play as a human. Yeah. Is Mega Man a human? He's a robot. Robot. He is a robot. Um, Did you yeah, but there's only one. We had a human question? That yeah. Was question? Okay. It's not part of a series. Was, of a was this based on a license? No. Okay. Uh, you I want to know about it. I'm jumping to genres. Is this an RPG? No. Not an RPG. I helped us out so much. All those multi-platform RPGs of the 16-bit era. <laughs> <laughs> I really regret that question. In my mind, I was like, "F it, it's Chrono Trigger," and then I was like, "No, there's multiple games in that series." And it's also a uh, fantasy game. Oh, it's absolutely <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> so much magic. That's pretty bad, Marty. It was. Yeah. It wasn't. Well, it was everybody. Like, everybody. No worse than hands. Everybody gets one. Yeah, <laughs> yours was hands. Yeah. Every week, yours. Is- <laughs> Can't wait to find out what my dumb question will be. <laughs> You know what? Let's find out. Seize right the day. Now. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's so it's not fantasy. I mean, it's a, that's not part of a series. I was gonna go Metal Gear, but I guess it's not licensed. Not licensed. Oh boy, that's. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump you, Dan. Do uh, it. Was this game uh, developed in Japan? No. Eliminates all the Capcoms and Konamis. Yeah, n- n- all those thir- Nintendo games that came out of multiple consoles. <laughs> so it's U.S. or Europe developed. Not an RPG. <laughs> uh, Europeans didn't make games. It'd still be Skate or Die. Skate or Die was an 80s game, wasn't it? Is, uh, was that also a series? No. You couldn't see his hands. He always cut no, them behind it, his back. It's because he, you eventually stop, stop skating, then you die. <laughs> they couldn't make any more. Speed? <laughs> this game a platformer? Yeah. Yeah, it is, guys. Look, I redeemed myself. <laughs> Where did you pull that red thing from? Is that like the panic button? Yeah. <laughs> right. Sam, um, Jared, <laughs> I need help. Wait, uh, what did you just ask? Platform. It is a platform, but he, but his answer was, yeah. You know, you know, I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm thinking That's maybe good, out of yeah, this pressure. world. Yeah, another world, uh, out of this world. Uh, what was the other one? Um, and th- those are the same game, and another world, and out of this world. Yeah, but there's the cinematic platformer, uh, flashback. flashback. That's right. the one. Um, mm-hmm, yeah, uh, well, I mean, it's not really, it's unlicensed, not a part of a franchise. You play as a human wait, platform. Wait, did we say it was unlicensed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like, I was thinking like Simpsons or something like that. It's not that's any licensed. of those. So, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. So, yeah. Um, so I, I would call those games cinematic platformers. That's the word I would use for it. Wait, is that a question? No, I'm <laughs> Damon. It, is this game a cinematic platformer? Yes. I, I, <laughs> That's I, I 15. Think. You have five questions left. All right. Uh, <laughs> How do we narrow it down between flashback and another world? I mean, it, it's... Uh, the, the, I forget what flashback looked That's like. That's what I was going to say. Did, I, it, did it have that, that same flat art style? I th- in, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, one of them was... Rec- another world was recently remade, right? It was re-released. It was recently re-released. Yeah. yeah. I, and yeah. flashback wasn't, right? So was this game oh recently re-released? Wait a minute. 
Mm. I don't know. Oh no! And that, like how? Also, oh, what if we're not thinking of? <laughs> what if it's like Prince of Persia? That's a cinematic platform. Ask me if the if if this no, game I, was I'm, recently re released. I don't, I don't uh, know what I'm right. asking. I don't know what I'm That's asking. Uh, but fifteen. Do we know it's sixteen bit era? Why do we no. know it's sixteen bit era? You because it's you the nineties. It's a nineties game. But there were lots of two D games on PS one. Like Oddworld is a cinematic platformer. I know you don't, you don't play, play as a human. Yeah. But there's other like there was Heart of Darkness. Plays a little boy in that. That's a cinematic platformer. I don't think you're a little boy in a Heart of Darkness. You carry a shotgun around, blasting people away. Are we? Are you picturing the same game? No, you're thinking of the book Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness that <laughs> Apocalypse Now is based on. <laughs> All right, fifteen. Are they both sci-fi? I don't really remember. I remember Another World much better than Flashback. Yeah. Uh, should we just ask like a, a very pointed uh, Another World question? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> do you have Do you have a laser gun? Uh, I feel like we're, I feel like something's happened. I feel like it's not been, it's not not right. another world. Yeah, if it, if it was, I, you would have said. Yeah. I can't answer that question. Yeah. That's a weird. I don't. I don't. I don't, rem- I don't remember. I don't know how to. I don't know how to confirm it's flashback before you ask if it's flashback. <laughs> I kind of just want to do it. Is, Is it? Does Does his name it, Does the name <laughs> of the game have to do with <laughs> memory? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Is it flashback? Okay. It is flashback. Yes. Oh, I don't remember flashback at all. I, don't uh, just I remember the cover. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I remember the cover and I remember liking it and I remember it playing very similarly to Out of This World. Yeah. It's like that sort of like so it was a, was it the same guy? game. Not the same guy. Oh, it wasn't Eric. Uh, but like great animation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's Persia. It's another game. Yeah. yeah. So that's out in 1992. It came to. Genesis and Super Nintendo and PCs of the time, yep. pretty much everything. Woo, we did it. Yeah, developed by Delphine Software in France. Wow. Not around anymore. Published by U.S. Gold. Not around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right, it's uh, described by Wikipedia as a cinematic platformer, Justin. A recent edit, Jay Davis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Davis 420. <laughs> uh, it also says it's coming to Switch this year. What? Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is that in our wiki? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone can edit it. Oh, is that why you were? That was why he was weird about the. Is it recently yeah. released? Yeah, because I, uh, I, I, I didn't knew know it that. was coming, but then yeah, I, I I couldn't remember if it was flashback or another world uh, out of this world that was recently. I think released. it was out of this world. Out of this world, it, it was it came to mobile yeah. and a bunch of other platforms. Yeah, yeah. but it, it wasn't supposed to be was very good, and right? And everything like wasn't supposed yeah. to be very good or something. Well, I I Maybe call it just didn't age well. Colin reviewed it and hated it. Okay. Yeah. I I didn't play. I think part of the problem was they drew over all the old art, and then it didn't like the ledges weren't like in the exact same pixel perfect uh, yeah. spot, sure. and it made it weird. Yeah, I mean, it was it, it was may just, not be true. That, I think that game I that game just always controlled badly, mm-hmm. and people just remember it super fondly because because it's so distinctive, and because back in those days there weren't a whole bunch of games where it's like you couldn't say screw this, I'm gonna go <laughs> gonna go play something else and throw your controller across yeah, the room. That's true. But like these days, you you you. Like the controls are just real bad. It's like going back and playing the first Tomb Raider, where it's it's kind of like it's grid. Math. It's oh, like math. grid platforming. Yeah. It's like grid based underneath everything, so you're pushing the button at, at just a different yeah. time yeah. than you would expect, and it's just not not yep. up to modern standards. Or at like all. replaying the first Crash Bandicoot game in the collection. I was like, ooh, this is <laughs> yee, this is very hard. Yep. And finally, this week that uh, Castlevania Netflix series is out today. Yeah. Oh, it is. Speaking so. of Crash Bandicoot, Jonathan is reviewing it. He watched two episodes and he likes it so far. Really? Well, Apparently, like good. people are like, "This is good." I had no idea what to make of that when that was announced. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I like Castlevania games. Yeah, but there's not much of a plot there to like. Not like a lot of story there. It no. tells the story of Castlevania Three. Vampires are bad. Yeah, yeah, vampires are bad. Yeah, but it has Alucard in it. it has Sypha, Grant Dynasty. Grant Dynasty in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Justin looks so excited. His first name was Grant, and his last name was Dynasty. I, I don't think I ever ever got to. I never got to uh, Castlevania. He's 3. of the niece no, Dynasty. I'll add that to the list. <laughs> of and is it? It's Trevor Belmont. Trevor Belmont in mm-hmm. that game. And I don't know if you were on this uh, uh, game scoop recently when I shared a scoop gem in uh, in the Japanese version. It's not Trevor. You know what, what your name is? What is in, it? Uh, Ralph. Ah, what? <laughs> and it's Ralph Belmondo. What? <laughs> yeah. So what did they do to him? And, yeah, may, may as well, like, you've got Italian plumbers in yeah. one game. Might yeah, might as well have Italian vampire slayers. Yeah. And the uh, same dude who did that is doing the Assassin's Creed anime. Yeah. Just yeah. announced in a Facebook post, hey, good news, everybody. I'm making an Assassin's Creed anime. Well, see you later. <laughs> and then was like, what? our newsboys were like, whoa, ah. what? <laughs> well, also, Ubisoft PR was almost certainly, whoa, yeah, what? Yeah. I mean, Netflix also just renewed Castlevania for a second yeah. season today. It's only four episodes, 30 minutes apiece, so it's oh, just I, a movie. Yeah, so it's just kind of like a movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. All right, I'll check that out. 
And that is all the scoops that we have for you this week. Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Dan. My name is Damon. Everybody have a great weekend. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're out.